This is proved by the testimony of General Lahuzen, who worked under Admiral Canaris in the op there. General Lahuzen attended conferences where crimes against whole populations were plotted in advance by the Nazi conspirators. Will you please explain exactly what took place at this conference in the Führer's train? First of all, Canaris had a short talk with von Ribbentrop, particularly as regards the Polish region. Secondly, Canaris spoke vehemently against the measures that he, Canaris, had found out about, to wit, the projected shooting and extermination measures that were being directed against the Polish intelligentsia, nobility and clergy, as well as all elements that could be regarded as embodiments of the national resistance movement. Canaris said at the time, more or less verbatim, that the world will at some time make the armed forces under whose eyes these events have occurred also responsible for these events. Defendant Frank, Nazi governor of Poland, was another of the conspirators guilty of directing mass murder. In his diary, he speaks of taking advantage of the focus of attention on the Western Front by carrying out wholesale liquidation of thousands of Poles. These atrocities were not restricted to the East. Here is the proof in the village of Oradour sur Glane, France. town of Bonn, Belgium. Here is the proof in the San Callisto Caves, Italy, where 350 hostages were carefully listed systematically murdered. And here is Lidice in Czechoslovakia. In blind retaliation for the assassination of SS man Heydrich, the Nazis murdered all Lidice's men and sent their women and children into slavery in Germany. But this was not enough. Boys of the Arbeitsdienst were moved into the ruins of Lidice and ordered to level the village to the ground. be the Nazis' example to all occupied peoples. But more terrible still were the concentration camps, which from the beginning had been the conspirators' chief weapon against opposition of every kind. German anti-Nazis were the first victims, but with the war their numbers swelled to include citizens of all the nations of Europe. Their fate is described by witness Rudolf Hess. I commanded Auschwitz until the 1st of December 1943 and estimate that at least two and a half million victims were executed and exterminated there by gassing and burning.
At least another half million succumbed to starvation and disease, making a total debt of about three million. Included among the executed and burned were approximately 20,000 Russian prisoners of war who were delivered at Auschwitz and Wehrmacht transports. The remainder of the total number included about 100,000 German Jews and great numbers of citizens from Holland, France, Belgium, Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Greece and other countries. Medical experiments too were standard procedure at many concentration camps. These included lowering the body temperature to 28 degrees centigrade, high altitude tests in pressure chambers, experiments with poisoned bullets and contagious diseases, and even sterilization experiments. This was genocide the premeditated destruction of entire peoples, genocide, the direct result of the Nazis' claim that they had the right to destroy the party's opposition. Tomorrow the world, dead or alive. In the name of the French Republic, Monsieur de Monton closes counts three and four the final charges of the indictment. All the defendants committed crimes against humanity, including the murder and persecution of all people opposed to the Nazi party, and the enslavement, exploitation, and deportation of civilian populations. The slave labor policy was the responsibility of defendant Sokol, who admitted in 1944 out of the five million workers who arrived in Germany, not even 200,000 came voluntarily. Forced labor often meant brutal and degrading treatment, for Saukel himself suggested. All the men must be fed, sheltered, and treated in such a way as to exploit them to the highest possible extent at the lowest possible expenditure. And defendant Bormann added, the Slavs are to work for us. In so far as we do not need them, they may die. Slavery was only one aspect of Nazi exploitation. Defendant Goering, in a talk with German occupation authorities in 1942, discussed another, plunder. God knows you are not sent out to work for the welfare of the people in your charge, but to get the utmost out of them so that the German people can live. This everlasting concern about foreign people must cease now, once and forever. I have here before me reports on what you are expected to deliver. It makes no difference to me in this case if you say that your people will starve. But Nazi crimes against humanity were not limited to foreign peoples. Defendant Frick, as Minister of Interior, directed a program aimed at aged, insane, or incurable Germans, the so-called useless eaters. Thousands were committed to special institutions. Few ever returned. Evidence proves they were murdered because they were useless to the plans of the Nazi conspirators. But perhaps the greatest crime against humanity the Nazis committed against the Jews, a campaign of hate and murder that goes to the heart of the Nazi movement.